How's it going everybody? Ed Ricker here and this is a setup tutorial video on the Mavic Air 2 by DJI. The Mavic Air 2 is a really impressive drone for both the size and the price and some of the specs even beat out the Mavic 2 line of drones. Check out my review on YouTube of the Mavic Air 2 about some of those specs and just how good of a drone this is. Now since I opted for the Fly More combo, I did get two batteries along with the DJI bag, the carry bag, and of course the charger hub and that type of thing. However, PJY Tech was nice enough to send me their carry bag for the Mavic Air 2, which is really high quality. I've been using it for a lot of my gigs. I've shot a couple weddings with this Mavic Air 2. I've shot a couple other live events, some realty videos, and a couple other things, and I've always carried it in this PJY Tech bag. We'll get more into this and some other PJY Tech uh, accessories later on in the video. And when you first get the drone, it's gonna be folded up just like this. Um, the front arms fold out to the front like this, and then the rear, folds underneath and back like so. The gimbal cover right here comes off. If you flip it over, you can get your finger right here, pull, and it snaps right off. And here's the gimbal with the camera. When you first get the drone, you'll want to do a few things first at the house. Uh, most notably, you want to make sure that you've charged your batteries because you don't want to go out to fly for the first time with a battery that's not fully charged. And these come about 40, 50% charged. While your batteries are charging, you also want to download the DJI Fly app to your phone or your display device. Now, I guess at this point, if you've already bought the drone, uh, you've gone through the process of making sure that that's compatible with your device. But if you haven't, check the link in the video description to a list of compatible devices and make sure that your phone or your display device will indeed work with the DJI fly app. The third thing that you want to do is make sure that you have updated firmware. You could probably fly with firmware that's not updated, but it's not recommended. So what you want to do is make sure that we can power this on, connect our display device to our uh, remote control, and get going with that uh, firmware update before we go out to fly for real. So imagine right now we're still at the house. We haven't left to go out to fly at the field yet. Um, we're going to make sure that our props are off before we turn on the drone indoors. So to do that, we're going to take a motor with our finger and then we're going to take our other hand, press down on the prop. And there's a little bit of a give there, you can see. Once you press down, you can turn that prop and it comes right off. Two of them are going to turn one way and two of them are going to turn the other way. And they're diagonally matched, just like that. If you look at the drone from the top, you can see that some props have a white circle on them and some do not. Well, same with the motors. No white circle and then here we have those white lines. So this prop will go with that. This prop goes with that. So now that our gimbal cover is off and our props are off, we're going to power on the drone. Um, I'm going to press the top button right here once quickly and then again and hold it. So short press, long press. And you can see the drone start to kind of twitch and stuff. You can see the gimbal uh, initiating and turning on. And here is the remote. Now, the way a phone or display device would connect is you pull up the top bracket and then you can take your finger and it's, it's when you're looking at the front of the drone, it's going to be the left side. This little wire, this cable right here, pull this up and bring it around. And this is what's going to connect to your display device. I'm using USB-C uh, because I'm using a Pixel 4. Shout out to Team Pixel. The phone slips in just like so, and that cable comes right around and connects. Remember that the thumbsticks come out of the bottom of the remote control right here and then screw right into the gimbals. You can turn on the remote control by also short and then long pressing, just like that. And if you bought these together, they should be bound and uh, they're already talking with each other now that they're both on. The DJI Fly app is going to ask you to activate your Mavic Air 2. And if you're not ready, don't do it yet because what happens is you're going to have 48 hours from the point of activation to uh, be able to purchase like a DJI Care Refresh plan or some other repair plan from DJI. So if you're not ready to fly this, don't activate it until you're within 48 hours of being able to maybe purchase that plan. I always go with DJI Care Refresh on most of my drones. Um, it saved me a few times and I've utilized it at least three times now. So I do recommend it. Link in the video description to purchase that particular plan as well as the drone itself. All right, so now that you've connected the drone and you've started the DJI Fly app, it might ask you if you need to update the firmware. 
um, and this is also a time where you can just make sure that image is working properly before you go out to fly. There is a micro SD card slot in the drone, and if you plan to record a lot of footage, you're going to want to make sure that you have your micro SD card in the drone in the side door here. Um, there is, I think, eight gigabytes of internal storage, which may get you by. If you look on the upper right of the app, you see these little three dots. If you click that dot or you tap it with your finger, up comes the first couple uh, options here. We have safety, control, camera, transmission, and about. And we can adjust some of these values on these various tabs just to make sure that the drone is going to operate the way we want it to. Um, for instance, max altitude, we might want to set to just under 400 feet. If we're in the United States, we want to keep it under 400 feet above ground level uh, with the FAA. Max distance, you can set if you want to. Um, I have it on no limit. Auto return to home. So RTH means return to home. And what that means is it's going to return to home at an altitude that you set it at. And you want to make sure you set the altitude above the highest thing around you. So if you're around trees and buildings and that type of thing, make sure you set it above the height that you think those things are at. 180 feet return home altitude is going to be just fine for around here. Um, there's nothing probably over 75 feet around here. So 180 feet is uh, how high it's going to come back if it gets into trouble, loses connection. It's going to come back automatically and it's going to be higher than anything else and it won't hit something. Scrolling up here, we have obstacle detection, which we want to have turned on. There are no side sensors or uh, top sensors on the Mavic Air 2, but there are front, rear, and bottom sensors. So let's keep the sensors on. Also, we have our ability to uh, calibrate our compass and our IMU. Scrolling down, we also have advanced safety settings. Um, so here you can select what you want it to do if there is signal loss. You want it to descend, you want it to hover, or return to home. Let's always have it return to home with signal loss. That way at least they'll come back to us because if we're flying over water or trees or wherever, uh, you don't want it to just descend automatically. Also, emergency propeller stop. Make sure that's set to emergency only uh, because if you go ahead and move the sticks in this particular configuration and it's not an emergency where the drone is sensing that you're falling or crashing, uh, then your, your drone's gonna fall out of the sky and that's not a good thing. So make that emergency only. Also at the very bottom, this is unique to Mavic Air 2, AirSense technology. Enable it so that we can be notified if there are manned aircraft in the area, and then we know what to do, whether we need to descend or just keep an eye out for what's, you know, what kind of air traffic is around us. Let's go back and then go to our control tab. Here we can select our units, um, so it can be metric or imperial, and uh, gimbal mode. Let's keep it on follow mode, make it simple. Um, and then also we're going to allow upward gimbal rotation. That means that the gimbal can go higher than just the horizon level. If you turn that off, then when you want to move the gimbal up and down, it will actually be locked with the horizon. So uh, enable that. We're going to give a little bit more uh, possibility for moving the gimbal up and down with that enabled. Gimbal calibration is also maybe a good thing you want to do. Uh, if you select gimbal calibration, it'll do it automatically. Uh, it takes I don't know, like a minute to do, and it's just going to allow the gimbal to uh, calibrate, move up and down, left and right, and make sure there's no problems. Go into your camera settings, and you can select various things, um, MP3 versus MOV, uh, color, normal, coding format. Let's just kind of keep it all default, um, especially if you don't know exactly what these values mean. Just keep them default for now. Um, and at the very bottom, we have our general uh, histogram and our overexposure warnings. I keep those on, but again, that's something that may not be of interest to you. Um, I'm going to turn those off for the moment. And then we also have things like white balance, uh, which we can keep on auto. And then uh, where we want to record to, our SD card or internal storage. So let's keep it on SD card. And by the way, this reminds me I have to format this SD card pretty soon because I'm running out of space. I do turn off the cache when recording. That's one way that your display device will start to record onto it uh, a lower resolution image or video. Um, I turn that off though. I just record straight to the micro SD card in the drone itself. The next tab is transmission, HD versus smooth. So you can either have a higher resolution live transmission or a smoother transmission. I keep it on HD. Frequency is on dual, channel loads on auto. Let's, let's not mess with any of this. And then about is just to check like your, your model, your firmware, um, your FlySafe database. On the bottom right of the screen, you have your man, manual versus auto um, selections for camera control. We're on manual right now, but if you tap the M with the camera, 
we can go to auto and maybe auto is a good thing when you're first starting out and on the upper right you see your battery you see your rc signal strength you also see your gps signal strength and and your satellite connection so right now we're connected to 14 satellites out here which is absolutely perfect now if you look at the remote control here we have our return to home button we have our power button we have our tripod normal and sport modes right here so that's going to be slow uh, medium or fast essentially um, we also have our function button which we can program to do things and we can switch back and forth between photo and video mode by pressing that button right there of course we have our thumbsticks right here and if we move around the back we have our ability to take uh, photos or video depending on what mode we're in we can press and start and stop there um, and then here is our uh, little jog dial and that's going to raise or lower the camera tilt and that's that's something that a lot of people don't find right away so make sure that you know this is how you're going to raise and lower that gimbal tilt with the camera and we're about ready to go out and fly um, there are a few products I want to show you first of all the bag that we referred to earlier this is a great carry bag um, got a lot of compartments in it for the uh, remote control as well as the drone plus extra batteries I also have some ND filters and just a lot of extra props. It's a really cool bag. Check this uh, link in the video description to this bag. All right, so we're out at the field, uh, away from trees for the most part and power lines. We have a nice open space. I'm gonna put out the PJY Tech uh, landing pad and we're gonna stake it into the ground because it's a little breezy out here. We don't want it to blow away. And this is gonna help us to um, take off and land safely without dirt or grass getting into our motor. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm unfolding the drone. I'm also gonna spread those props apart so that they don't have to use centrifugal force to spin them out. And my phone's already connected to the remote control. The remote control's turned on, the drone's turned on, and you see at the top upper left, it says takeoff permitted. That means that we're good to go. Also on the upper left, it says N for normal mode. And if you look in the center of the controller, it says normal as the center switch as opposed to sport or tripod. So we're gonna take off in normal mode. Now one thing you may wanna check is the compass calibration. And so on the upper right, those little dots, go ahead and click that. And then it says compass normal and IMU normal. Now if it didn't say normal, you're gonna to wanna to calibrate both of those. However, compass, I'll, I'll teach you that anyway. There's no harm in doing it again. We're gonna go ahead and hit calibrate while the drone and the remote control and everything is on and hit start. And what it's going to want you to do is rotate the aircraft 360 degrees horizontally. Now, what I like to do is take the drone and kind of orbit around the drone. So the drone itself is not moving through space, not much anyway. And once it finishes there, it now wants to rotate it vertically. So I'm going to then put the drone upward like this and do the same thing. Now, if you look at the upper right, we're going to hit that dot, dot, dot sign in the app. I'm going to tap that, go to the control tab, and then scroll all the way down to flight tutorial. And this will teach us how to get off the ground for the first time and some basic controls with the sticks. So first of all, it says take off in an open, uncrowded area, turn up phone volume to hear voice prompts, and ensure the battery of the aircraft and remote control are at least 40% before flying. Start pre-flight check. A safety check before you fly. So this is what we uh, have to check. Remember when we were back at the house to power on the drone, we took those props off. Now just make sure that they're back on properly and that they're spinning the correct direction. Uh, gives you uh, indications here on the app. Uh, it's gonna ensure the gimbal protector is removed. Yes, we've done that. And check and ensure the aircraft is placed with the rear side facing you. So I'm behind the drone right now. And that's the whole point here is we wanna make sure the drone is facing away from us as we take off. That way left and right for us is also left and right for the drone. If it was facing us, that would be reversed. Remote control check. Unfold the remote control antennas and adjust the position of the remote control and antennas in relation to the aircraft. So it shows the strongest positioning that we can achieve is actually with the top of this remote control and this bracket facing the drone. It's telling us to check the device hardware such as aircraft battery, remote control signal, and GPS signal. So that'd be all these icons on the top. The flight info there is on the lower left. So that's your height, your distance away, as well as your speed, both vertically ascending and descending and horizontally moving through space this way. Front and back obstacle warnings you can see on the top and the bottom. Uh, you'll see these little uh, orange bars 
and, and eventually turn red if you get very close to something, but that's kind of like a rough uh, depiction of it being near an obstacle. And so if I'm behind it, it may very well sense me. If I'm in front of the camera facing it, it might very well sense the camera. And switch between video, quick shot, and hyperlapse modes is there on the right. Um, we'll, we'll tap that later on. On the upper left, it says take off permitted. If there was any problem, whether uh, mechanically or uh, maybe location-wise, because you were near an airport or a no-fly zone of some sort, it's going to tell you that on the upper left. Looks like we're good right now. And here we are. We're about to take off. So tap here to take off, uh, to, to open the takeoff window. So we're going to tap that little icon on the left and then hold this take off button. We tap it and hold it and it'll turn green, a little radial. And it takes off. Now you hear that? That is, uh, it's sensing me. I'm right behind it. It's sensing my body. So I'm actually going to move a little bit because that's really annoying. <laughs> but uh, basically that's the sensors in action. That's the warning uh, that's going to uh, indicate that you are near an obstacle and it's sensing you. So if I move back behind it, you see on the bottom of the, uh, the app, see that orange line? That is me. So it's sensing me and it's telling me where in relation to the drone I am or anything is. But come on this side, there we see at the top that orange line. That is also indicating that it's sensing me. Uh, it says ascend one meter. So with the left stick, we're going to be pressing up and we ascend one meter. Now we take that left stick and we push it down. And we have gotten back to about roughly where we were and then turn left. So this is yawing. Turn left and turn right. So that's all left stick operation right there. Now it wants us to fly forward. So this is right stick. We're going to be pressing up with the right stick. That moves forward, backward, and translate left and translate right. So that's how you move the drone around through space. So in mode two, your throttle and your yaw, so that's up and down and turning left and right, is with the left stick. With the right stick, it's actually moving through space to the right, to the left, or moving forward or backward. So we're going to bring this back to the landing pad and we're going to press the land button, very similar to the takeoff button. We're gonna hold it when we're over the pad. And as it comes back down, we can adjust the, the position of it just in case we're missing by a little bit or we're um, about to fall off for some reason. So we're gonna move this back over the landing pad and then hit the land button. Here we go. By the way, there's a big gust of wind right now. So what I'm gonna do is wait it out. I'm not gonna try and land right now. So if ever it feels like you're not safe to land because of one reason or another, wait. Um, if you have a gut feeling, trust it. So I, I feel this wind, I'm gonna wait. All right, the wind is pretty much gone now, so what I'm gonna do is press the land button. And as it's landing, I'm just going to use my right thumbstick and just adjust it and make sure that it's actually gonna land on the pad. <laughs> now that pad is pretty small. Um, you might get a larger pad if you wanna make it easier on yourself, but I was able to do it even with a little bit of breeze. Um, either way, that's pretty much how you take off and you land, and then everything after that is just more detailed movements, you know, using both thumbsticks to create a, a combination movement that, you know, works for whatever you want to do. I'm going to go ahead and take off again. We're going to press that takeoff button, and we're going to get a little higher this time. So go ahead and take off. Now that we've taken off, let's find out where our picture and our video modes are. On the right, you see uh, that little film strip. It may look like something different if it's in photo mode to begin with, but either way, you tap that, and up comes your photo mode, your video mode, your quick shots, your time lapse, and all the different categories within that. Um, I'm gonna stick with video, and I'm already at 4K30, which is my preferred shooting style anyway. So let's go ahead and stay with 4K30, but this is where you could select your resolution and your frame rate. I'm gonna go ahead and get out of it by tapping anywhere on the screen. And the red button there on the right is how you start recording. So I'm going to tap that and now we're recording straight to our SD card. You can also use the right trigger button on the remote control to start or stop. 
Let's go up. So what I'm going to do is use my left thumbstick and press up to uh, throttle up and get up higher in the sky. And I'm also yawing a little bit to the right just to kind of take a look around, you know. At this point, what I'm going to do is stop. I'm at 84 feet high. I'm also four feet away from my home point, so still very, very close to being straight above where I took off. I'm going to go to auto uh, video settings. Right now it's on manual, but let's go to auto. And then I'm going to tilt down with my gimbal using my left uh, index finger on that dial there. And as we tilt down, we can see where exactly we are. We're at this park. I'm going to yaw to the right with the left thumbstick, push to the right. And here we are. Now this is where I actually did the uh, Mavic Air 2 review and the Mavic Mini setup tutorial. So it's a very familiar spot to me. I like it because it's kind of, you know, there's, there's space to, to fly around, but not many people walk around here. It's kind of the side area of a larger park that no one really knows about, so I love it. So I'm just using my left thumbstick to kind of yaw back and forth and my uh, index finger to move up and down with the, with the gimbal. You also see with auto video settings, so if you're tilted up, the sky gets darker and of course the ground gets almost too dark, I would say. You tilt down and the ground really brightens up and the sky becomes brighter. Now here's a little tip that's special to the DJI Fly app. Uh, if you look at the bottom of the screen in the center, there's a little like crescent shape with a dot and then also an arrow or like a paper airplane. The dot represents me and the little paper airplane represents the drone. So as I move my body, you can see that the drone is moving around that. So it's an indication of where the drone is in relation to where I'm pointed. So if I'm holding it like this, that means the drone is right in front of me. I look up and there it is. If I turn this way, it means the drone is over to my right. So if I look up, there it is. You can also see that the drone indicator right there is also turning. So that's a good way to know which way the drone is facing as well as where it is 360 degrees around you. Also on the bottom left is a GPS map there. If we were to expand it and then expand it again, we can see that we are here in Raleigh, North Carolina. If we pinch in on the map, we can see exactly where we are. Again, if I start turning with my body, you can see that indicator is moving. You can also see that the drone moves. Also, H stands for home, so that's where it took off. Let's go up even higher to about 150 feet. So right here in the center of the remote control, we have our little switch here for normal or tripod or sport modes. So tripod mode is a very slow and controlled mode, whereas sport mode is very, very fast, and actually it turns off the obstacle avoidance sensors if you're in sport mode. But you get your max speed and maneuverability in sport mode. Now while we're looking at the controller here, that's return to home. If you hold it, it enacts return to home. However, if you just tap it, then it actually serves as the pause button or the stop button. Either way, what we're going to do is hold this button and we're going to uh, initiate a return to home. And you hear that, that beeping? That's the return to home sound. So if you look up, it's coming back and it's going to land pretty close. And we'll see how accurate it is. It may not land right on the landing pad. Like I said, this is a small one. But either way, it's coming straight down. If you're looking at it right now, it's doing a pretty good job. I'm going to adjust it a little bit. There we go. I'm using my own control just, just to make sure it's going to land on the landing pad. If you do hit some grass like that, just inspect the props, you know, make sure they're not damaged. A little grass like that's not going to hurt anything, but um, I hope that this uh, video helped you out a little bit. If you have any questions, comment below. Also, thank you to PJY Tech for sending me the landing pad, the bag. You can find the links to these products down below in the video description, as well as a purchase link to the Mavic Air 2. Now, if you do purchase through those links, I do get a small commission, and that just helps me to continue to make these videos. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Until next time, happy flying.